Good morning, everyone, and welcome once again to the Baptist Bread Devotional and Scripture Song Broadcast for the second day of January 2023. And we've already gone through the first day already. Oh, boy, and uh, I have a feeling that this year is going to fly by before we know it to be 2024. <laughs> so today's topic is titled, Saints Do Suffer. And before we get started on all that, I'd like to greet you as always in the name of our Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ, who is the Lamb of God, which taketh away the sin of the world. And hope and pray that he's your Lord and Savior today. If not, well, today is that day of salvation. And the Bible says, Boast not thyself of tomorrow, for thou knowest not what a day may bring forth. So today could be your last day on earth. And if you were to die, where would your soul spend eternity? Would you go to be with Jesus or die in your sin and spend eternity in a devil's hell? Which God doesn't want anybody to perish, but all that come to repentance. And uh, But many don't want to do God's will. And so... Make sure you get that settled in your heart today, that Jesus can save your soul when he wants to. Amen. So simply call upon him, believe on the Lord Jesus Christ, and thou shalt be saved. Amen. <clears throat> All right, we're going to start with today's scripture song, and this is from Jeremiah fifteen sixteen. So press play here and sing along with Brother Dean and Sister Patty. Amen. Jeremiah fifteen sixteen. Thy, Thy words, words were found, found and, and I did eat them. And thy, thy word was unto me the joy and rejoicing of my, my heart. I am called by thy name, O Lord God of hosts. Amen. Thy words were found, and I did eat them. And thy word was unto me the joy and rejoicing of mine heart. I am called by thy name. I did eat them, for I am called by thy name. Amen. All right, so put that back to you. Colossians 3.16 Let the word uh, of Christ dwell in you richly uh, in all wisdom, teaching... All right, sorry about that. I might have to get a new battery, so... All right. So let's put this back to you first, and we'll do those again at the end of the broadcast. But now it's time to get into today's topic, titled, The Saints Do Suffer. And the passage is from Acts 9, verse 16. It says, For I will shew him how great things he must suffer for my name's sake. Acts 9, 16. And that's Jesus speaking, um, I believe. And uh, this is um, author is R.P., that would be the initials for, I believe that's Randy Pike, if I remember correctly. So let's see, RP. Let's see here. Yep, that's Randy Pike, and he's a missionary statesman in Green, Greenville, South Carolina. So let me read you what he wrote here on this topic of saints do suffer. He writes here, and I'll read to you what he wrote. He says, in reality, the impossible teachings of some mixed up people slams straight into the face of what God has planned for some of his children, thus unspeakable sufferings and sorrows. At times their lot will fall into deep heartache, frustration, pain, and even certain physical sickness or death. So, uh, continuing on, he says, For this is their calling sent from above, at least one of Job's miserable comforters spoke the truth when he said, Yet man is born unto trouble as the sparks fly upward. Job 5.7 Later on in this drama, we hear Job lament, Man that is born of a woman is a few days and full of trouble. <laughs> right? John, Job uh, 14.1 Over the course of true religious history, God's response to the sufferings and problems of his people has never changed. I will be with him in trouble. Psalm ninety-one, fifteen. Uh, there is a wonderful bright side to our fate in faith. It is true because God said so. A popular British preacher once said, "While truth puts her shoes on, a lie goes around the world." Oh. Uh, con consequently, uh, mass error 
concerning suffering, sickness, and death is abundant, the prime danger lies in the fact that all of those cunning doctrinal corruptions are so thoroughly uh, in integrated with fragments of popular and basic Bible doctrines that it takes an experienced Christian, one highly skilled in God's Word, to detect the difference, right? So that's why um, we're to study God's Word, so we know and can detect the difference between true uh, stuff and those that are wanting to bring false uh, teachings, amen? It is on this very point that the cults make such easy prey of the sincerely interested but scripturally ignorant masses. The truths they do preach and teach so often have hidden hooks couched within the appealing bait, and history affirms the anxious masses swallow the bait. Hmm. Yeah, so make sure you don't swallow that uh, bait by those uh, false teachers, and make sure you study God's Word and get into it and know what it says and find a good Bible uh, teaching, preaching church uh, where the truth of God's Word is uh, um, preached and taught. And so you know the differences between false doctrine and real doctrine and those that are trying to take you and uh, carry you away. Um, so, amen. All right, so that's the end of the topic for the Baptist spread. And now I'll go ahead and do the Daring Devotion one here. And this is from the book Daring Devotion, a 31-day journey with those who lived God's promises by M.R. Conrad. And today's topic is titled uh, Sufficient Grace. This is day two. And this is a quote from Darlene Dibbler Rose, missionary to Indonesia, 1917 to 2004. She writes, But my child, my grace is sufficient for thee, not was or shall be, but it is sufficient. Darlene Dibbler Rose, missionary to Indonesia, 1917 to 2004. And I encourage you to go read her book. Amen. And the uh, passage here is Second Corinthians twelve nine. It says, And he said unto me, My grace is sufficient for thee, for my strength is made perfect in weakness. Most gladly, therefore, will I rather glory in my infirmities, that the power of Christ may rest upon me. Second Corinthians twelve nine. All right, so let's get into the story now. Sufficient grace. Uh, she writes here and says here, Lord. I'd go anywhere for you, no matter what it costs, said 10-year-old Darlene McIntosh in rural Iowa. Ten years later, in 1938, Darlene Dibbler and her husband, of one year disembarked for the first time, to in time in Indonesia, the cost of following Christ would surpass anything she could have imagined. The sacrifices of the next three years met Darlene's expectations. <laughs> As prisoner, excuse me, as pioneer missionaries, she and her husband, Russell Dibbler, braved the jungles of Papa Indonesia, taking the gospel to remote tribes for the first time. Unknown to them at the time, the struggle to survive in this environment caused permanent damage to her husband's heart. However, they saw souls saved and God at work. Amen. Then World War II struck. The Japanese conquered Indonesia. The invaders interned all foreign nationals in work camps. On Friday, March 13, 1942, the Japanese separated Darlene from her husband. As he stood in the back of an open truck, Russell whispered down to her, Remember one thing, dear. God said that he would never leave us nor forsake us. The words of this promise from Hebrews 13.5 were the last darling would ever hear from her husband's lips. Russell would die a year later of dysentery and complications from an undiagnosed heart condition in the men's work camp in Pari Pari, Indonesia. When Darlene's captors informed her of her husband's passing, the promises of God's word assuaged the feelings of abundant abun abandonment uh, that flooded her soul. Uh, the words of Isaiah 43, 2 comforted her. My child, do not, do I not say that when thou passest through the waters, I would be with thee, and though, and through the floods, they would not overflow thee? Darlene Dibbler 
clung to God's promises, verses memorized as a child braced her to face each day's trials. Over her three years in the Japanese internment camp, Darlene Daly endured uh, forced labor, dietary deprivations, uh, psychological tortures, untreated diseases, battles with vermin, and other personal indignities. She suffered with her friends, wept as they lost loved ones, and watched in distress as fellow prisoners and former co-workers broke down mentally under the strain. Among all these trials, Darlene ministered to her fellow prisoners, uh, sharing with them the promises that kept her going. She even dared to share the gospel with the violent Japanese officer in charge of the work camp. At her darkest hour as a prisoner of the Japanese secret police, Darlene sat alone in solitary confinement on death row, emotionally spent from hours of interrogation and wondering if her accusers truly believed her to be an American spy, Darlene yielded to torrents of tears which soaked her filthy dress. At that moment, the words of Second Corinthians, Corinthians 12, 9 comforted her. She later wrote, When there were no more tears to cry, I would hear him whisper, But my child, my grace is sufficient for thee, not was, nor shall be, but it is sufficient. O oh, the eternal ever-present, undiminished supply of God's glorious grace. That grace came not only in the form of comfort, but also as answers to her prayers. God's miraculous grace delivered her uh, when she should have died, healed her when medicine was not available, and even turned enemies into allies. At times, God showed up, uh, showed unexpected kindness, like when Darlene prayed for one nutritious banana in solitary confinement and received 92. <laughs> Amen. She would write, quoting Hebrews 11.1, 1, Evidence not seen, that was what I put my trust in, not in feelings or moments of ecstasy, but in the unchanging person of Christ. Referencing Second Corinthians 1.10, she knew Christ to be the one who delivered and doth deliver her uh, he will yet deliver darling dibbler lived the promises of the god she loved and served what did it cost darling dibbler to follow christ her husband her co-workers her friends her freedom her security her health her treasured wedding gifts and all her earthly possessions when she was finally freed at the end of the war the only thing she owned was the dress she wore out of the prison gates Despite her losses, Darlene later testified, If I could change anything of my life, I don't know of anything that I would want to change. Amen. Uh, God's grace is sufficient. God's promises, even in the darkest hour, prove true. We can look at the faith of this young woman and through her see the faithfulness of our God. Amen. And now here we have personal reflection. Some questions here for today. And there's one, two, four of these questions. So the first one uh, says this. It says, in what ways am I discontent with what God has graciously allowed in my life? So that's question number one. How can I find God's grace sufficient in difficult circumstances when others would only see uh, deficiencies? If I lost everything, how could I prevent bitterness from blinding me to God's grace? Have I memorized enough of God's promises that... If I were to be deprived of my Bible, I could still rest on the promises of God? Hmm. Good question there. All right. And then we got further reading. 2 Corinthians 12, 1 through 10. And uh, then we have uh, Darlene Dibber Rose's book, Evidence Not Seen, A Woman's Miraculous Faith in the Jungles of World War II, uh, San Francisco, uh, Harper and Rowe, 1988. So that's the book there. And uh, I have read that on my... Uh, podcast uh, god's messenger lighthouse podcast on anchor and spotify so you can check that out or get your own copy of the book amen all right so that's the end of the daring devotional and praise the lord now let's go ahead and do the hymn for today and this is um gonna be hymn number 241 and this is titled it came upon the midnight clear and i'm sure we're all familiar with this one and this was written by 
Edmund H. Sears, 1810 to 1876, and Richard S. Willis, 1819 to 1900. So, press play and try to sing along with this the best I can. So, here we go. It came upon the midnight clear That glorious song of old From angels bending near the earth To touch their harps of gold Peace on the earth, good will to men. From heaven, all gracious King. The world in solemn stillness lay to hear the angels sing. Still through the cloven skies they come with peaceful strains unfurled, and still their heavenly music floats o'er all the weary world. Above it, sad and lonely, lowly plains, they bend on hovering wing. And ever over it, some sounds, the blessed angels sing. But with the woes of sin and strife, the world has suffered long. Beneath the angel strain have rolled two thousand year, years of wrong. And man at war with man hears not the love song which they bring. Oh, hush the noise, ye men of strife, and hear the angels sing. And ye beneath life's crushing load, whose forms are bending low, who toil along the climbing way with painful steps and slow. Look now for glad and golden hours Come swiftly on the wing Oh, rest beside the weary road And hear the angels sing All right, for lo, the days are hastening on by prophet bards foretold when with the ever circling years comes round the age of gold when peace shall over all the earth its ancient splendors fling 
and the whole world give back the song which now the angels sing. Amen. Sorry if I was a little off tune on that last part, but uh only did four stanzas there on the instrumental. So there you go, that's the hymn. And of course, uh we know that angels don't have wings, so um, and I'm sure there's probably some other things that were incorrect uh in this uh hymn here, but uh not sure what, but it's still a good hymn for the most part. Alright, so that is the um, him and now let's read the story here on the bottom of the page. It says uh, first published in 1849 These lines mark the first of any carols by an American writer and one of only two lyrics uh, penned by Edmund uh, Sears Although I was educated in the Unitarian uh, denomination. I believe and preach the divinity of Christ he wrote the depths of turmoil as its writing are um, in stark contrast to the peace which the lines profess. The Civil War loomed near. The upheaval of the Industrial Revolution was ongoing, and the obsessive uh, rush for uh, greed of gold in the West was disrupting communities. Uh, one can almost see the wistful wonder Edmund must have visualized of the hope yet to come. Amen. All right, so let me give you the references here now. And we got stanza one is Luke 2, 8, and then Luke 2, 9 through 10, and then Luke 2, 14, and then Luke 2, 11. Stanza two, we have Acts 10, 36, uh, Matthew eleven twenty eight. 28, and then stanza three, we have Luke twenty-two thirty-six, and Matthew twenty-four seven, and then Romans twelve eighteen, and then stanza four, we have Luke eight fourteen, and then uh, Revelation nineteen six to seven, and then stanza five is Isaiah two one to five, and Revelation five ten, Revelation twenty-one four. And then um, Micah uh, 4, 1 through 3. So those are the references there. Amen. All right, so now I'll put that aside there. And we'll get into the scripture songs again. And then we'll wrap it up for today. So amen. All right, so we'll do yesterday's and then conclude with today's scripture song. For yesterday was the first of the year. So here we go. First John John 5.13 these things have I written unto you, believe on the name of the Son of God, that ye may know that you have eternal life, and that ye may believe on the name of the Son of God. That's right. These things have I written unto you, that believe on the name of the Son of God, that ye may know that ye have eternal life, and that ye may believe on the name of the Son of God. These things have I written unto you, that believe on the name of the Son of God, that ye may know that ye have eternal life, and that ye may believe on the name of the Son of God. That ye may believe on the name of the Son of God. Amen. All right, now today's... Jeremiah fifteen sixteen. Thy, thy words were found, and, and I did eat them, and thy word was unto me the joy and rejoicing of mine heart, for I am called by thy name, O Lord God of hosts. Thy words were found, and I did eat them, and thy word was unto me the joy and rejoicing of mine heart, for I am called by thy name, O Lord God of hosts. Thy words were found, and I did eat them, for I am called by thy name. 
Amen. All right. Well, that'll be it for today's broadcast. But before I go, let me give you tomorrow's scripture song for the third day of July, or July, January, um, already. And uh, Colossians 3.16 will be the scripture song. And it says, Let the word of Christ dwell in you richly in all wisdom, teaching and admonishing one another in psalms and hymns and spiritual songs, singing with grace in your hearts to the Lord. Amen. So that's tomorrow's uh, scripture song. And then tomorrow's Baptist Bread topic will be titled uh, Sacrifice? Uh, question mark. And the passage is Romans 12.1. So and we'll read 12.2 also. So um, that will be tomorrow's topic, Sacrifice. And then the daily, or excuse me, the daring devotion uh, topic for tomorrow, for day three, will be titled As Bright as the Promises of God. And this is um, about Adoniram uh, Judson. And he was a missionary to Burm, Burm, uh, Burma. And then the passage is Romans 4, 20 through 21. So that would be about him as bright as the promises of God, day three. So amen. So we'll find out more about that tomorrow. And then, of course, the hymn for tomorrow will be um, How Great Our Joy. And this is another one about the birth of Christ. And um, i trying to see how many more of these we have left of this birth of Christ. Looks like we have quite a few left. Oh, they must, whoever wrote this book, must really like the stuff on the birth of Christ because even though uh, we know that uh, Jesus wasn't born in December, but um, he was born more around uh, September time, if you uh, do your study. So it looks like we have one a second. Let me, I want to put the bookmarker in here so I can see how many more of these they have. So one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, seven, eight, nine, ten, eleven, and twelve, thirteen. So thirteen more of these to go and then uh, starting in uh, hymn 255 we go on to the earthly ministry of Christ. So, um, quite a few more of these birth of Christ uh, hymns. So, all right. So today, tomorrow's will be titled, How Great Our Joy, hymn 242. Another one on the birth of uh, Christ. And if you get a copy of that on MelodyPublications.com, uh, is where you can get, order a copy of that. And then the Scripture Songs book is available in the CDs on the internet at www dot daily scripture songs dot com it's brother dean and sister patty's website and missionaries to poor kaituma guyana the runyons so pray for them and then the baptist spread devotional book this is the cover to it and it's available on www dot baptist spread dot com or www dot tim green ministries dot org is where you can get a subscription going for that and then we got the um daring devotional book um here and you can Either order that online somewhere, or the internet, or your local bookstore. Amen. And then, of course, the most important thing we book we need to be getting into is God's Word, reading it and studying it. And um, if you haven't started reading it yet, good time to start reading it for the new year. Amen. You can start from the beginning. There's lots of different uh, um, reading charts out there. You can do it chronologically or from uh, beginning to end, or you can do a couple of Old Testament uh, um, uh chapters from uh, the Old Testament and some New Testament chapters and then a psalm and a proverb for each day. Amen. So make sure we're getting in God's word uh, most of all. So praise the Lord. All right. Well, that'll be it for that today. And so may the Lord richly bless you until next time. Bye-bye for now.